The Tribune Tower. The Chicago Tribune acclaimed itself to be the world's finest newspaper. The Tribune was expanding and needed a larger office building. What better way for a company that believed it was the world's finest newspaper to find the most beautiful and distinctive office building in the world by holding an international contest with submissions from all over the world to help design this beautiful office building. The contest was announced by Robert R. McCormick and Joseph Patterson on August 18, 1922. They offered a $100,000 cash prize and the first prize winner would get $50,000. For the competition, each submission would include six drawings. For the ground floor and typical floor plan, two elevations, a section model, and a perspective from the southwest view. There would be a jury of four people from the Tribune Company and Chicago architect Alfred Granger, who would review these submissions. In order to participate, each person had to pay $2,000. The space that was supposed to be filled was located on 435 North Michigan Avenue, which was a new street at this time. When all the entries had been submitted, they of course started to judge the contest. There is a big difference between the European designs and the American designs. Europeans took more avant-garde like the German colleagues would have done, but in America, they stuck to like old ways and just took more like new interpretations of it, but still kept with, like, old concepts. Also, the Americans had sort of an advantage by knowing what, like, skyscrapers were supposed to look like and what structures it needed to be built so that it actually be stable and stand a chance of surviving the weather conditions of Chicago. The Americans needed tall buildings that would offer more space. Um, some building concerns were like fire, safety, ventilation, and lighting. Um, they had to restrict the height, and also they followed the zoning laws of New York. Even though Chicago had not made um, the importance of these um, height regulations a law yet, but understood that it needed to be regulated in the contest. The diversity of massing and ornamentation in commercial buildings um, was more seen in the American drawings. Once again, the German architects wanted a more like distinctive and defiant building to represent the city. So um, one of the concepts was from uh, Maxburg, which was Stockton Crane, um, said that like skyscrapers should be like a city crown, bringing citizens together and civilizing the secular kind and like a cathedral of the olden days. And it should be like the focal point of the city. Most entries were either modernist, art deco, or neo gothic. One of the designs was by Adolf Luz, a Viennese, who had this dramatic Doric column. It was supposed to be 400 feet tall, but of course wasn't going to be built because of due to building regulations in Chicago. Um, it would have been black granite, which would be way too much, ex way too expensive compared to limestone. It was overwhelming and like imperious and overpowering. But the architect's like creative thought from this was just to create an image so striking that it would come to represent Chicago the way cathedrals and major public monuments did European cities. His old forms sort of betrayed the avant-garde German colleagues of his, because he like took just like old architecture concepts, which he thought would work in America, but the Europeans disagreed with him. Another design was by Sabio de Gardi, an Italian. His design was basically a Roman triumphal arc, which was just like 
put it to a larger scale. And obviously, uh, they didn't know that this would be so difficult to put an elevator through since like the arc just made it complicated for this and it was like an impractical design. In American Bertrand Goodhue, his design was basically a bunch of blocks. Um, it didn't use any historical designs, but also it wasn't like very creative but in a sense it was since it was like a sculptural mass rather than like using old designs it used its own like form. Eli Sereny, a Finnish man, um, his design actually came in last because it was late across these but um, most people thought his design was like the best and most sophisticated and would better like represent um, the Chicago. His design was a telescoping pyramidal composition. It was 19th century, like Romanesque revival. Um, it was less dramatic than a uh, hood and Howell's design, but it was like more subtle and like it felt just more unified overall. Um, the site was like worked in with the plans of the design. So it really like fit in with the study, even though the beer and parents didn't even like the American studies. But um, Eli Sarney, his outside opinion on this, like really brought a new feeling to architecture to explore. Sarney's design could be described as strip gothic. Um, the windows were like pushed back, so it was a commercial building and also felt gothic. Hood and house design um, was a 36-story building. It was modeled after the Tower of Rouen Cathedral. Some people said that the winning model was evolved of dying ideas, unlike Sarney's, which was a more modern and timeless invention. Hood and house designs um, would be using a steel frame and would be decorated with Indian limestone. Raymond Hood and John Mean House design wins first place. Um, it would described to be a good office space surrounding the elevator, utility, and our uniformed window spacing. It has flying buttresses which provided unity from the bottom base to the top. Um, the lines up to the decoration on the top. The style was gothic. The style was gothic, but justified by the architects on the ground that it allowed a good expression of the virtual steel structural columns. William Hallibird and Martin Rachi came in third place. Walter Fisher, who was from Marienburg, um, his design was not trying to use exact details, but instead he'd use texture. Weimar Bauhaus design was based on modernity and Walter Gropius's design and Luce's design was more eccentric. Although Eli Sierney did not win the contest, this was his big break in America and continued to do more work here. And this contest had just brought so many opportunities for all these architects to be like more well known through this contest. Uh, the American structures usually had a three to four story base and just uh, built up 12 to 16 floors on top of that. And in order to like make the base and the top align together and unify, uh, they tried using finials and turrets and pyramid and statues um, to make the transition to the top seem less bulky. The Tribune Tower's spidery counting silhouette can be recognized 
by most people. What do you think of the Tribune Tower? I think it is a beautiful <laughs> sky. Do you think it was a good idea to be an international contest? Yes, I think it was very beneficial to <laughs> Chicago, similar to the function of Lollapalooza. Competition offered self-publicity throughout the world. People would then be anxious to see the new skyscraper. Also, many great architects became well-known after this competition. The contest was international. 23 countries were invited, and there was 264 entries. Um, were the Europeans a, a disadvantage? An outsider's perspective gave them an advantage. Uh, Sereny influenced Raymond and Hood. Um, Blair came in did not like the Walter Gropus plans, and he believes that the jury made the right choice to pick um, Raymond Hood's design. The Tribune Tower makes a great gateway to North Michigan Avenue. In many other contests, the owner did not build the winning design, but in this case, they did.